Greetings, everybody. I'm glad you decided to tune in today, and I hope that the message that uh, I want to share with you is one that you'll find to be important and one that you can you can take with you and, and apply. Um, it's been uh, a long week, I'm sure, for many, uh, a week of social distancing and, and uh, sheltering in place, but um, I know that God is good and God is in control and, and um, he's still there. As we get ready to start this morning, I would like to lead us in a prayer, so if you'd bow with me, please. Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you again for all the blessings you give us in life, for our families, for our jobs, for relationships we have with one another, for ultimately for Jesus, uh, for his love and your love for us because of that love. We not only can call you our Father, but we have a hope of heaven. I just ask that you be with those who are suffering right now, be with those who are, who are dealing with uh, sickness, I pray that you give them strength and comfort. I pray you're also with those who have lost loved ones, that they can find peace and comfort from you. And I pray for those who are caring for all who may be sick, for our hospital staffs, our first responders. I just pray for them, Lord, that you keep them safe. I pray for the leaders of our country. I pray for those who are in positions to make decisions in regards to um, cures or paths to take to try to eliminate or, or alleviate this, this virus that is infecting so many. I just pray that you give them wisdom, you give them strength and courage as well. I just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you had tuned in last week, so to speak, you know that uh, I spent a little bit of time on the Wizard of Oz and focused on Dorothy and how um, she really was looking for things that she didn't have. And she felt like home really wasn't what she wanted, so she went on the search down a yellow brick road to find something that she thought was missing, only to realize um, that so much that she really had and needed and wanted and that was important to her was at home. Well, I wanted to spend one more week just touching base on something in regards to, again, lessons from the Wizard of Oz that I think is important, I think it's timely. And it really has to do with the Tin Man. And so this lesson from the Wizard of Oz today is if I only had a heart. And we'll focus a little bit on the Tin Man as the backdrop to my thoughts today. You might remember the Tin Man. I mean, he was solid on the outside. He was, he was given an appearance like nothing could harm him. You could polish him up and he could look really good. But you know what? Inside he was hollow. Nothing there to make him feel like an actual person. He was lacking what he thought was needed to make him human and that was a heart. And so today we're gonna spend a little bit of time on a heart and not the organ that beats within inside of us because yes, that's very important, but really the love that's associated with either having a heart or the absence of love with not having a heart. Right now, we probably have some free time on our hands, probably a great time to do some spring cleaning around the house, and maybe you've already done that or you're in the midst of doing that. But also, maybe it's a time for us to do some tidying up, if you will, of our hearts while we have this free time. I'm not judging anyone here. I'm, I'm just thinking that uh, with, when we're all done with this sheltering and this social distancing, that, that maybe we can roll out a new and improved version of ourselves. Imagine if the world we, we all finally get to step back out into is more loving and more compassionate, is more forgiving and not as selfish. All of those depend whether or not we have a heart that reflects the heart that God has one that pleases God. And so I'd like for us to just consider that a little bit this morning. The Tin Man. You know, we can be a lot like the Tin Man, especially if we allow ourselves to lose heart, 
to become distant, to, to get depressed, to, to lack love, just hollow, empty, alone, and incomplete. But, but the great thing is that while, while we're limited in where we can go and what we can do right now, nobody's put a restriction on our ability to love one another or to love others, or to show people we care about them, to, to show those that, that even may have wronged us at one point that we care for them. Even those that maybe in our own experiences may seem unlovable. Nobody has put a restriction on us not to show love to them. And we've got time to do it. In fact, we even have resources to do it. I mean, we have things like phones and, and email. We have Facebook and Twitter, whatever that is. And we have texts and messaging and the good old US mail. Have you got anyone in your life that you've lost contact with? In recent months, I, I put forth an effort to, to search for and reconnect with a few people who way back in different points of my life really did mean a lot to me, who really did impact my life. And not only did I want to connect with them, but my real method and, and my real motive here was to connect with them and let them know how special they were to me, to let them know what they meant to me and still mean to me, to let them know that I love them. One couple that I was able to, to catch up to was actually a couple that, that helped me a lot as a teenager. Together we worked on the church bus ministry and they were my role models. And I'd lost track of them over time and so I was able to reconnect and. And it just was great to do that and to talk with them on the phone and, and really to tell them just how special they were to me. Another that I was able to catch up with is someone that I worked with 15 years ago in Arkansas who now lives in Minnesota. And, and I was able to connect to that person and we've talked on the phone and, and it just feels good to reconnect but also was able to let that person know just how much I care about them and how special they were to me. And then there was someone 30 years ago, before we moved from Ohio to Illinois, that I had lost contact with. And I found that person and, and made a couple attempts and finally we were able to, to connect and we've exchanged some emails. And, and I wanted to make sure that that person knows that even though there's a lot of years in between the last time that we had had any communication, I hadn't forgotten them because they meant a lot to me. And then even a cousin of mine who we were once pretty close when we were growing up, but, but life and miles and, and just different things kind of got in the way and, and we'd lost contact. But I was able to reconnect with her and that meant a lot too. And, and now I feel some closure because all of them know how important they were to me and how important they are to me because I told them. And why did I mention those examples? Well, I guess it's because, yes, I needed some closure and I'm wondering maybe somebody watching this lesson and listening may have similar situations in their life. And it might be a great time to just try to reconnect with someone and let them know you love them. Let them know that they mean a lot to you. You know, when you think about the heart, a few things come to my mind, love, compassion and forgiveness and you know Jesus really set a standard for us when it came to love and compassion he set a great example of how we should love one another and we should love each other in fact we can read about a response that Jesus gave to the question what is the greatest commandment we find that response in Matthew chapter 22 in the New Testament and this was Jesus's response he said Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. You know, speaking personally, that word all, all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, it's a little troubling because that is a pretty big commitment. And then when I think about having to love someone the same way I would love myself, 
also a bit of a challenge, but, but it's something we can do and something we need to do. I think another example of the value Jesus placed on caring about people can be found in Matthew chapter 9, uh, beginning in verse 35. It says this, as Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus valued people. Jesus loved people. It didn't matter who they were, what their background was. He did love people. He went on to teach us about the extremes that we should go to in demonstrating our love for others. In fact, in Luke chapter 6, verses 27 and 28, Jesus said this. He said, but I tell you who hear me, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. When I read that, it's easy for me to say, what? Jesus, come on now. That's, that's easy for you to say. I mean, but you want me to love the person who, who told lies about me to discredit my reputation? You want me to love the person who, who had mistreated myself and my family? Then it makes me think maybe the tin man was better off than he thought. But let's keep reading. Let's keep reading through verse 36 of, of Luke chapter 6. Unfortunately, Jesus gets pretty blunt. And by unfortunately, I guess I mean, I wish he could have offered some reason not to love someone when we just don't feel like loving them. But he didn't do that. Follow along with me or listen to this reading beginning in Luke 6, verse 29. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies. Do good to them. And lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High. Because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. What's Jesus really saying here? Well, in one section he says, it's really no big deal to love someone who loves you. It's, it's to be kind to somebody who's kind to you, to, to be good to somebody that's good to you. That's not hard to do. But here's the challenge. Here's the real test, if you will, of one's love and ultimately of one's heart. And this is what Jesus tells us. He says, love the unlovable. Be kind and compassionate to those who hurt you deeply. Show kindness to someone who's mean-spirited to you. Demonstrate goodness to those who may not deserve it. There is your true test, I think, of love and compassion. There's our true test of love and compassion. There is the real test for our heart. First, Let's see if we have a loving heart, but then next, see if we have a heart that resembles that of Jesus. The best way, I think, to feel your heart beating, if you will, to know that you have a pulse is to demonstrate love and compassion to others. And, and yes, we can do that even in the midst of this social distancing and this sheltering in place. I mentioned a couple things that I did. When was the last time that you called someone on the phone just to chat, just to see how they're doing, maybe to mend a broken relationship or to reassure them if they're living alone that they really aren't alone, 
to check on someone who, who you may even struggle dealing with, you, you know what I'm talking about. That person who seems to like suck the life out of you when they're around. Maybe we know one of those people. Or maybe it's, it's that person that when you see them coming, you want to turn the other way because you just really don't want to have to engage in conversation with them. Or the one that just drives you nuts. Well, Jesus is kind of saying, you know what? None of those reasons or excuses or conditions matter. We're supposed to show love and compassion to all people. And then even if we do muster up enough emotion, enough feeling to show love and compassion to people, what makes it even more challenging is, is whether or not, and whether or not we have a heart like Jesus, is whether we can forgive people. I think forgiveness is a key element of loving. Forgiveness is, is, is so important, but yet maybe so difficult to do at times. A key element of loving is forgiving those who, who hurt you in some way. And, and even when I was writing that a few days ago, I just found myself making this scrunched up face. We tend to hold on to the hurt, to cling to the past, to keep the grudge as some form of leverage that, that we might be able to use against someone sometime in the future. And, and I don't know why we do that really. Maybe it's power, maybe revenge maybe control, maybe pride, or maybe simply we lack the one thing that's needed to forgive, and that's a loving heart. Jesus gave us a parable over in Matthew chapter 18, and, and it has to do with forgiveness. And it, it's a really great example and explanation of, of what it means to forgive or not to forgive. And so I want to share that with us as we think about how forgiveness really is a true demonstration of our love for others. This is found in Matthew chapter 18, beginning of verse 21. And just ask you to, uh, to listen as, as I read this parable of the unmerciful servant. It says, then, Jesus, or then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. And some versions will even have that written as 70 times seven. Do the math on that one. It goes on to say, therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. So let me just interject here. The first servant who owed all those talents, that equals a, in the millions of dollars today. And those hundred denarii, just a few dollars. So a big difference here. So let me read on. He said, but when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant? just as I had on you. In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should be able to pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. 
Did you catch that last verse? This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. We've long heard the expression forgive and forget. And I'm not saying that that's an easy path to walk, but I am really grateful that God will do that for me. That God will forgive the times I've disappointed him, the times I may have disowned him, the times that I just disobeyed him. He's willing to forgive because he loves, because he loves me and he loves you. Can we say that we would do the same thing? Or are we like that unmerciful servant? Do we ever try to imitate God in this regard to where we could say we forgive unconditionally? I mean, what was it that Jesus said as he, as he hung on the cross and he was about to breathe his last breath? He, he looked around to those gathered and he, he saw those that had ridiculed him, those who had beaten him, those who had spit on him. He knew there were those who had abandoned him. But yet he pleaded with God even before he took his last breath and said, Lord, please forgive them. They just don't understand what they're doing. And we could say, you know what, that's Jesus, and, and Jesus was perfect, and yes, he was, and, and I can't be perfect, and I, I, I know I can't be perfect. But there's another example in Acts chapter 7 of a man named Stephen, and in verse 59 and 60, it says, while they were stoning him, Stephen, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Stephen forgave those who were about to kill him, who were throwing stones at him that would have left, that will lead to his death. But yet his heart was full of love and he was able to forgive. If we think about that tin man, he felt like he was incomplete without a heart. He was solid on the outside, hollow on the inside. What about us? Do, do we have a heart that's full of love and compassion for everyone? Do you have a heart that's full of love and compassion for everyone? Not just those who love us or who are good to us or are kind to us. We've already talked about that. But, but those who really maybe aren't that deserving of our love, who aren't the most popular, the most friendly, the most kind, Do we love them and forgive them? And out of that, that heart of love, if we're able to demonstrate forgiveness, then truly, unlike the Tin Man, I think we know that we have a heart. One of the benefits, I think, maybe of this social distancing may be the reinforcement of the saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder, and I'm I hope it does. I, I'm sure it does. But I hope by it making the heart grow fonder, it can help us to be more loving and more compassionate and more forgiving. You know, people who have just been regular parts of our daily not lives, are, they're now unseen. They're people who sat next to us at work or who met us for lunch are, are invisible. People who we used to come and be next to and, and greet in our worship services, in our churches, we don't see them anymore, at least not right now. And if you've watched the news or looked at the internet or read the papers, we also find ourselves not just maybe feeling more loving for some, but also hurting for some. For those that we don't know, but who also may be hurting, that's that compassion the man who lost both of his parents, the athletes who lost their coach, the, the children who lost their principal. Our hearts are getting plenty of exercise right now because with every example we read or we see or we hear of kindness, of somebody going the extra mile right now for someone, we also read about someone else's pain or loss. And maybe what once went unnoticed because it really didn't impact us, now it brings us either much needed joy or tear tearful sadness. The tin man didn't have a heart, so he couldn't experience joy or sadness. In fact, 
He couldn't feel anything. But out of this time of absence and pain and uncertainty, let's increase our heart's ability to love, to show compassion, and to forgive. And may we be more determined than ever to find a way to emotionally embrace others and demonstrate to them that we do have, in fact, a loving heart. As I conclude my thoughts, I guess I just want to encourage you, every one of you, myself included, let's not feed into the hatred or the criticism or the blaming or the finger pointing or, or the pessimism that seems to be prevalent so many times these days in our society. And let's not let the fear and the uncertainty and the anxiety and, and even the isolationism to, to help us or to cause us to stop feeling, to stop sharing, to stop loving. As I conclude today, I, I again want to leave you with a song. Um, it's one by the York College Concert Choir and under the direction of Dr. Clark Rausch. Uh, it will be familiar to many of you listening. It will be applicable to all of us. It's called The Greatest Command, and I hope that its message touches our hearts and it reminds us of the, the importance of possessing a loving heart and showing and sharing that loving heart with others. The Greatest Command, the York College Concert Choir. <laughs> 